What is going on, hang gang? I hope y'all are doing great. If you're watching this on replay, what's going on? I hope you enjoy it. In this live stream, I'm going to take a bunch of questions. I'll have some good Q&A along with um, a Bible study. But I want to also just catch up with my subscribers, see how y'all are doing. And I'll be taking a lot of questions in this one. Intermixed throughout and then at the end. So hope you guys are doing great. I know it's a Friday night. There are people probably watching some football games. Um, can you guys hear me okay too? I got a new mic. This is the newest mic that I'm using to voice over my videos. And also, I am getting a new webcam very soon. It's getting shipped right now. So uh, I'm going to have a much clearer live stream. So that's that's good to hear. Awesome. Well, and for those of you who are just joining, I said next live stream, I ordered a new webcam. It'll be super crisp. But I hope you guys are doing great. And thanks for joining the live stream. And thanks for watching on replay. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, someone just said that. Right on. Zachary said, how's the tryout with New England? It was great. Thank the Lord. Um, yeah, just whatever God's will is. That's interesting being a free agent. You never know at the drop of a hat something could happen. So, But I'm obviously back home and um, just seeing what the Lord's will is, just praying about it, but also staying ready for any opportunity. But I've, I mean, I've been enjoying doing YouTube lately. Um, so right now I'm actually filming a video of me um, playing with myself in Madden on the community tab. I asked if you guys would want to see that. So that's the next video that's going to come out. And it was actually pretty funny because I didn't know I was in, I didn't know that I don't know. I don't play video games, but I saw all the comments of me being in there. So I thought it'd be funny to make a video and it, it was, it was cool. Let's see if there's any other questions before we get going here. <clears throat> any questions before we get going? Do I like Wii sports? No, I don't really play video games, honestly. And also this is a hot take. Um, God made men for dominion. Going back to Genesis 1, it says, you know, God made Adam and Eve, obviously. And then he he gave Adam a responsibility over the garden at first. And he told him to essentially be a, a steward of this earth. And a sort of false dominion that has occurred is men in video games, they can escape and have, you know, that feeling of dominion without actually being fruitful. So... Uh, that's why it can be dangerous and people can um, have a false sense of productiveness. Now, I do YouTube for a living and for me, it's not like the reason that I find it productive is because I know real people are going to watch it and hopefully get value out of it and I could share the gospel. So, um, but yeah, that's my hot take, quote unquote. Do you think the goalie panda said, do you think college club teams are worth it? Um hundred percent if you if you find the sport fun i think that's cool i mean it's obviously not a good way to get a scholarship you don't get i'm assuming you don't get any money for that but that's definitely i could see that being a healthy habit um you know if i didn't if i didn't play football in college i probably would have joined some type of club sports team just to honestly probably basketball i played basketball growing up as a kid <clears throat> Yeah, I would love to go to the bill. I see a lot of the bills comments. Um, they signed their punter on a long term deal, but yeah, I was I was available. He could have taken me as a rookie for cheap. The punter they have now is expensive. Do you think OU is the best decision for college? Yes, I do. Um, Proverbs sixteen nine: Man plans his way in his heart, but the Lord determines his steps. So. When I was at Arizona State, I actually grad transferred to OU during the whole, uh, you know, pandemic time. And I got basically kicked out of ASU. So God brought me to Oklahoma and it worked out. I found my wife there and had a great time. How do I punt farther, Turk? Well, get stronger first and foremost, and then have good technique. Swing straight through the football. Okay, 2D for you animation said, how should I approach the Bible from front to back or question mark? That's a great question. So this is probably relatable for everyone on here who's a believer. 
So the Bible, obviously, is a pretty thick book. In fact, it's more like a library. It's 66 books. And here's a little bit of anecdote from my life. When I was a teenager, after the Lord saved me, so I knew the gospel when I was a kid. And then beginning of high school, I fell astray, you know, was living a sinful lifestyle, completely forgot about the Lord. And then I hit the lowest point in my life where I didn't want to be alive. And God directed me to pick up the Bible. I remember the Bible that my mom gave me. And uh, I read the book of Ephesians. And that was the first time in my life where I felt true power and hope. And God saved me. But I say that to say uh, shortly after that, I started reading the scripture more. But for all of you, I, I feel like it's relatable to think, oh man, this is a daunting task. There's so much in the Bible. Um, how am I going to read this? But I really made a decision and a resolution to um, read a few chapters each day from at least one book in the Bible. And when you do that, so like what I mean is I started in the book of Matthew and Matthew is just over like uh, 20 something chapters. So if you read three chapters a day, you're going to finish Matthew in a pretty short amount of time. And that way you're segmenting the Bible into shorter chunks and in your mind, it's able, it's more um, attainable. So, you know, for example, the book of Philippians, all of you in here tonight, so the 150 of you who are watching, or if you're watching on replay, there's only four chapters in the book of Philippians. You could legitimately read the entire book in one sitting very easily. Now, of course, you want to be, you know, meditating upon the word as you read it and really trying to study it. But there is that balance of you just want to make sure you're getting it too. So I try to aim for reading three chapters a day and to answer your question, pick a book and go through it. And if you haven't read the New Testament yet, you should read the New Testament first. So pick like the book of Matthew or maybe the book of John is a great place to start and try to read three chapters of it a day and then go to the next one, go to Acts and do the same thing. And then what I do now is I like to pick one Old Testament book and one uh, New Testament book to go through at the same time. So that way I'm getting a diet of both. Do you still watch college football? Honestly, I'm sure you guys are surprised to hear that I really don't watch football at all. Um, I feel like being uh, around football for a large portion of my life, it's uh, it would make sense for me to want to watch it. But honestly, it's like, for me, just not, 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 not that much appeal to watch it, to be honest. What's a good Bible verse to keep in my mind? Well, you definitely can't just pick one, but one I'll give you right now. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All right, that's a good segue into, let me read a few verses, guys, and then I'll come back to more random questions. And this is a Friday night, and we still have 140 of you guys on here. So... This thing is really, it's a really good mic, but I feel like it's blocking my entire face. I'm excited to get the new, uh, the new camera too. Can you guys still hear me when it's like to the side like this? I hope so. Here we go. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 40. All right. This is a really good chapter. Um, I hope it encourages you. I'm going to start in verse 10. Okay, thank you that it sounds good. I'm going to type this in the chat. Isaiah 40, starting in verse 10. And I'm going to pin it. And if you're watching on replay, please pull out your Bible too. You're not going to want to miss this study. And we're going to answer more. Guys, also as I'm reading... Please ask questions and I will answer your questions related to the scripture. And then we'll go back and forth just to personal questions too. Here we go. So the prophet Isaiah is writing this. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd he will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. So I love how it starts out. 
highlighting the the power and the might of God. Um, and in verse 10, when it says his arm rules for him, we know that God is spirit, but that's a, that's a way for us to um, understand and be relatable to God and his power. But I love in verse 11, how um, we see God is described as a shepherd, right? Christ is a shepherd and we are his sheep. Uh, John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And so this description of God should remind you of the reality of how much God cares for you. Um, Book of Hebrews, you know, he's the, he's the overseer of our soul. And so even when you feel like you're alone or feel like you're struggling with something, just know that God who did not spare his own son is the one who cares for you and shepherds you. And that should, that should provide you tremendous encouragement, tremendous joy and tremendous strength. And actually there's a verse later on in this chapter that talks about uh, the strength that we get from God. So I read two verses. Let's see if there's any questions pertinent to what I just read so far. Um, Ball Hawk Pro said, did your, did your strong relationship with God happen overnight or was it gradual? That's a great question. That's a great question. So, um, I will say a quick caveat before I answer this is that everyone has their own unique relationship with the Lord, but we're all God's children. So there's not like a hierarchy of Christians, you know, for anyone who's truly a believer, it's no, we're all made righteous by Christ alone. So when you say I'm a quote unquote strong Christian, I obviously take that as a compliment, but also, um, or a strong relationship with God also understand that, we are only made right with God through the righteousness of Jesus. And in the good news of the gospel, um, it's by that righteousness that we're reconciled to him. There's nothing that I add to it. So, um, but the reality is obedience does reap blessing. And it's, and, and to your question, there is the reality of having a stronger or weaker relationship with God, practically speaking. And so I will say, it's, it's both overnight and gradual. It's overnight in the sense of salvation is a, is a transactional experience. Jesus, it says in, uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians, he made, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So that's a one-time thing. God, you know, Jesus bore your sin. You receive his righteous, righteousness. Now you're redeemed. Romans 8, you're adopted. You're a child of God. And so that strong relationship where you receive the Holy Spirit, you're born again, John 3, that happens in a moment, right? Um, you can't be any more saved in that moment. Once you're saved, you are saved. The, Ephesians 2, the Holy Spirit guarantees your inheritance. You are now indwelled with him. Um, greater is he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. The Apostle Paul says, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Second Corinthians, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So... That strong relationship happens in an instant. And that should be an encouragement for any of you watching right here. If you feel like you're lost, if you feel like you're stuck in sin or, you know, um, in darkness, understand that you could be made right with God right now if you confess Jesus as Lord and ask for forgiveness. And that's a, a reconciling back to your creator. That's why we were, that's why we were created. Now, the second part of that is God is also very relational in nature. Right? This is what makes the Christian God, the one true living God, so unique. Unlike the God of Islam or God of whatever false religion, the true God is triune in nature, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So he's been in relationship all eternity. And his desire is to have a relationship with us. And so that relationship is, is strengthened. Uh, we're not merely robots, but it's strengthened over time um, as we you know, have experiences and trials or whatever else it might be. and Hold on, let me just make sure I'm still going because I see that um, the live stream timer is like frozen. Can you guys still hear me okay? Okay, I'm good. Good to hear. But yeah, so to answer your question, over time it strengthened. And John 17, 17, sorry, I don't mean to ramble too much on this question. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Or no, that's, no, he says in John 17, 17, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. 
So the more you know God's word, the more you get to know the character of who God is and how to honor him. And you grow in your sanctification, in your maturity. You're no longer tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So uh, as I've grown, yeah, th that relationship with God is strengthened. And so practically speaking, for to answer your question, um, read, read the Bible more and trust God more and pray to him more. And that relationship will strengthen. Real quick. I see that Elver says, please don't call other religions false. That would be unloving of me because Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Elver, I actually want you to go to heaven and I want you to know that all other religions are false because it's only through Jesus that we're reconciled to God. And Satan's goal is actually to deceive you because he knows, Satan knows if you're still stuck in your sin, there, there is no salvation. You're on your way to hell. But the good news is God loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. But his death and his death on the cross um, is the only way that we can be reconciled to God. And that's good news. So, but the reality is because like what you're saying, Elver, that is why the apostle Paul and the other disciples were persecuted even to the point of death is because they were preaching the gospel. And it's not about your good works. It's about God receiving all the glory. And it's really interesting in the book of what I just read, second Corinthians, the apostle Paul highlights that the false teachers who were infiltrating the church in Corinth, they were advocating for um, circumcision to be a means of salvation and other outward acts because they weren't, they didn't want to be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Because when you rely on outward acts to make you make you right with God, it's a prideful man man centered religion. But what I'm preaching to you, Elver, and to everyone watching, is that the only way to be reconciled with a holy and righteous God is through Jesus Christ, and it's only through Jesus that we can be saved. If you're following another false religion or your own way that you think is right book of proverbs there's a way which you know there's a way that seems right to a man but it's but it's its end is destruction you can't be saved so that's why i say that so so elver said my own reality my own morality and i appreciate you listening elver too it's out of love that i say this and this is good for all of us to hear but you say my own morality it says in romans 3 there's, and he's quoting Psalms, there's no one good, no, not one. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And I, I'm reading through Deuteronomy right now. You could see the Ten Commandments serve as a mirror for us to look at. And this is a lot of, if you guys know who Ray Comfort is, he talks about this. But you can, Elver, you can see right there when you say your own morality, I would ask you, have you ever lied? Have you ever lied before? Have you ever stolen anything? Have you ever used God's name in vain? That's three out of the Ten Commandments that automatically makes you a sinner. And it goes much further than that, of course. God even sees your heart and your thoughts, right? Jesus said, if you just look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Um, so we're, we're, we're much more sinful than we even think. King David says in Psalm 51, forgive me my hidden faults. Who can know the error of his way? Um, so we sin when we don't even know sometimes. So compared to a perfect and holy God, our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. And that's why it's such good news that Jesus died for us. But if you're trusting in anything else except Jesus and his righteousness, you are still stuck in your sin. And it says in the book of Hebrews, it is appointed once for man to die. After that comes judgment. And that's why it's so crucial that you know you're saved. And of course, Matthew 7, Jesus talks about this. He'll, he, he says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? Didn't we do the other? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And that was namely, I believe, to people who think that they were good enough and tried to earn their way into heaven. And so that's the broad road. But the narrow road that leads to life is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's... Uh, our only means of salvation and being made right with the Holy God. So, 
Thank you, Elber. I appreciate that comment back. Um, let's read a few more. Let's let's read a few more verses and then we'll keep going. I appreciate all of you being in here and I and I'll answer some more questions in a bit. Here we go. Uh, verse 12. We've, wow, we've only gone through two verses so far. I, I know I've been talking a lot. Sorry, guys. We're already 20 minutes in. Wow. Again, this mic just feels like it's covering up my whole face. Who has, all right, verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? So right here, these ver this verse is talking about God's power in creation. And John, I see that you asked a question about anxiety. I'll get back to you after I read this portion of verses. I'll talk about anxiety. But let me finish this chunk. And I, th I just wanted to highlight your question, John, because um, I think this will help you as we, understand as we start to meditate, not inwardly, but outwardly towards who God is and how powerful he is and how loving he is and how um, gracious he is, that will help you. So he started off in verse 12 talking about God's power in creation. Now verse 13 and 14, um, it's more personal. Excuse me. Who has measured the spirit of the Lord? Or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? I love this. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. I love that verse um, where he says the nations are like a drop in the bucket. This isn't to, so this verse isn't to say that humans are insignificant or that God doesn't care. It's to highlight the reality of how powerful and awesome and majestic God is, right? And, and you hear atheists a lot of times say, oh, you know, how could you believe in God? Look how big the universe is. Don't you know that you're just, you know, stardust and nothing really matters and you're too, you're too uh, weak to just accept the reality of your insignificance and your randomness and look how big we discover the universe is. Don't you think, um, you know, God wouldn't make it that big or it'd be more scaled for you to be the center or whatever else. But the point is, you know, I believe that creation is actually that big to humble you and make you realize, oh, wow, there is without certainty a God. And we are 100% made intelligently and purposefully by a creator, not stardust. Uh, nothing can't create everything. And so this verse uh, is highlighting how God is the creator. And there's no rival. There's no equal to the one true God. And the nations are like a drop from a bucket because God's the one who made everything uh, and through his breath. So um, on one end, that should, you know, cause you to fear God. And on the other end, it should also humble you and make you realize, oh, I was created for God. Um, and I love how the scripture, you know, the full counsel of God's will reveals the different attributes of God. Cause right here, again, like I said before, you might be tempted to believe that, okay, you know, and there's some people who believe this, that, you know, God is just, God created everything. And then he kind of just stepped away and, um, as onto the next thing. No, that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is God is so powerful and yet he's also so personal and Jesus is, entered this earth this wicked ghastly earth he walked it god entered into his own creation to be able to sympathize with us in our weakness and to show us what a righteous man would look like and and more relatable god made himself more relatable to us in the person of jesus so i love that um let me see if there's any questions so far 
J Cam is over here rapping. Hang time's the name, punting with grace, trusting in God, running this race. College to pros, he's making it known on the field or off. His faith is shown. Yo, bars, bro. Oh, yeah, I forgot I titled this Friday Night Bars. I don't know why that came to my mind, the title Friday Night Bars. I think it's because, oh, I know I know why. It's because this mic is like, um, you know, new for the live stream. You guys haven't seen this yet. If you're, if you're just joining, I said at the beginning of the live stream, I bought this mic because if you notice my like last five videos, I don't mean to get too off topic of the Bible study here, but if you notice my last five videos, I, I've been trying to voice over more and more intentionally telling a story, except for my most recent one where I gave away $100 if they can catch my punt. And I thought that video would do better, but it was more spectacle, less storytelling. So I really enjoy the storytelling aspect more. So I probably won't do too many of those like, you know, catch my punt with $100 or spectacle ones. I like doing more of like the storytelling, like when Grace and I went to Shields, and I got to tell a story of what we're trying to do um, or even the fruit smoothie, which at first didn't do good. Now, if you notice that that's one of my most viewed videos because it reached like a new audience, not not like initially just hang gang who probably I, I feel like a lot of my viewers like football or sports. But anyway, I'm not I don't mean to get too off topic here. Uh, but yeah, that video is doing good now. So I was like, you know what? Let me upgrade my mic. And so I bought a new mic because going forward, I want to like storyline to all my videos and I want to voice them over. Um, but the reason I titled this Friday Night Bars is because, I don't know, this thing is, it's really nice, but for live stream, it's like covering my face. Anyway, I'm looking like I'm about to get it. You probably don't get it to go in the house. Microphone looking like I'm about to set up a show in your kitchen. All right. Let's see another question. Ooh, very interesting question from Michael Sawyer. How do you know? Okay, everyone, listen up. Michael said, how do you know God's voice from your own thoughts? And to better word it, Michael, I, I, you're saying, how do you differentiate between God's voice and your own thoughts? That's a very great question. Honestly it is. Let me get a second to think about that. Okay, a few verses came to mind. One, and I got to look it up to make sure I'm saying it exactly. Take every thought captive. Take every thought captive. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10, 15. Paul says, we demolish arguments in every presentation that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. So I, I, uh, that's a good question because there is a dynamic of you're born again. Therefore, you receive the Holy Spirit, and now, you know, you are God's son or daughter. So you're a new creation. I already quoted that verse earlier, but you're a new creation in Christ. So you you hope to now live in the Spirit and think godly thoughts and have godly wisdom. On the other hand, Michael, uh, that sounds like I'm talking to myself, but his name is Michael. Um, you're also attached to your sinful flesh. Romans 7 I believe that interpretation Paul's talking about the reason that he sometimes still sins is because he's attached to his flesh. So for all of you watching, the reason that you still sin as a Christian is because you're not yet in your glorified state. You're not yet in heaven where there's no more sin and you receive a new body. You're still attached to your fleshly body that has fleshly um, sinful impulses that you must, you know, crucify, so to speak, as you're now a new creation through the power of the Holy Spirit not to earn your way into heaven, but to show that you're a true son or daughter of God. You have the Holy Spirit. He who began a good work in you will complete it to the day of Christ. Um, and I say that to say, to start to know whether it's God's voice or your own. Um, I think that comes with maturity as you read God's word. First John, is, uh, he says like, um, I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And so they're no longer as a young man who is growing in his faith and starts to know God's word more, you're, you're able to silence the temptation thoughts and able to understand that that's not from God. Um, but it's mostly a matter of maturity. I don't think there's a blinker that goes off on your head every time you know for sure it's your thought versus the Holy Spirit. But it's more of a matter of just having the wisdom and maturity that comes from time. And I think the, the most helpful way I would answer this question, Michael, is you will know 
God's commands for you, what he wants for you, um, what he wants you to think even, right? I believe it's in Philippians, whatever is true, whatever is just, whatever is lovely, whatever is praiseworthy, think of such things. It tells you what to think about um, as you read God's word. And the rest of your life, you're going to have to still pray about things. There is that practical side of it. Like, uh, for example, there are some things that are explicitly understood. I know this is not from God. If it was like a sin, right? Hey, um, you should lie right now. That's not from God. That's my own flesh. Now, there's some things that are not inherently sinful. Like, hmm, I got cut from the dolphins. Where should I live next? Hmm, should I live in Oklahoma? I was thinking about it. I was thinking, should I move back to Oklahoma? Well, maybe. I prayed about it. Should I move? Should I stay? Should we stay in Florida, Grace? Or should we go to Texas? My brother lives there. It's cheap. No state income tax. A lot of sports going on if I do punting camps. My uncle lives in Houston. You know, that was something I had to pray about. But over, but I love Psalm, another verse that'll help you and all of you watching, I hope. Psalm 37, 4. I really love this verse. So please try to memorize this verse. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Meaning he will literally implant the desires of your heart that you should have. So once you pray about something, do whatever you want to do next then about that decision. Whatever you want to do, if that's the right choice. Now, don't get me wrong. There are obviously, again, if it's sinful, that's the wrong choice. But um, I hope that helps. And there's probably more I can say and more I could not say, but we'll move on. I'll take one more question, then we'll keep going. Sorry if I don't get your question either, guys. I kind of just look. There's like, it's hard for me to follow all of them. I just kind of pick one that sticks out to me. And then I go from there. Um, okay, this one, I'll read it. Plasmatic1806, interesting username. Turk, I feel lonely and can't get a girlfriend. I trust the Lord, use capital L. I trust the Lord, but man, it gets hard sometimes. Any advice? Love you, man. Do your thing. Love you too, bro. Thanks for asking that question. Right on. Um, I'm sure that there's other people wanting some advice on this as well. So for all of you who want a girlfriend or if you're a girl and want a boyfriend or if you are, you know, ultimately husband or wife, um, you should take advantage of the time that you have being single to further your relationship with the Lord. What I mean is if I was just only, and I trust me, I understand what you're saying of feeling lonely and wanting a girlfriend. I a hundred percent get that before I was married to grace. I understand. But if I was only feeling like that my entire time of being single, I would have missed out on how God was trying to sanctify me and prepare me to become a husband prepare me to be ready um, to, to be married to grace. So my best piece of advice to you is understand that even before, even after you're married, God is still your number one relationship and grow closer to him. Um, Jesus, uh, where is it? It's in, I think it's in Joshua. Deuteron I can't believe I'm not remembering this verse, but never, uh, it's in Deuteronomy. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. The Lord says, um, Matthew 28, Jesus comforts us. Behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And in the Gospels, he sends his Holy Spirit, the wonderful counselor, to dwell in us. So God is always with us, and we're not lonely in that sense. On the other hand, I 100% get it. Book of Genesis, it's not good for man to be alone, practically with other humans. It's not good for him to be alone. And that's why God made a woman to be with Adam. So bring those prayers up to God. Pray for any of you in here who want to be married. Uh, you know, starts out with a girlfriend or boyfriend. I get it. But pray for that person to enter in your life and that God would prepare you. You know, more importantly, that God would prepare you in the meantime and that you would be growing in your sanctification. And honestly, when I met Grace, I don't know if I shared this before on this channel, but I'm sure I have at least once, but I'll say it again real quick here. Uh oh. See, I'm still getting used to uh, this ginormous mic. I'm looking like I'm about to get it, but I don't get it. But when I first met Grace, I was not looking for a girlfriend at all. In fact, this is when I first transferred to Oklahoma. I was focused on football, ministry, doing my own thing. And then lo and behold, 
I met Grace out of the blue. And again, I wasn't looking for a girlfriend because I just transferred there and I was trying to excel in football. And I was at this point, I had like 10,000 subscribers too. So I was like really busy with YouTube. And if anything, I was like, okay, let me find a, a few strong brothers in Christ to be good friends with. And I thought I was only going to be at Oklahoma for one year. But because previously before that, I was praying for a wife in God's timing. God knew that I was going to meet my wife there. And a practical verse that I'll say before I keep reading the rest of this chapter and, and then answer more questions, Matthew 6, 33. For all of you listening, this is another great verse to memorize. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Everything else will be added unto you. And, if, and in context, you know, you can understand that for food and money and, and a house, but how much more so even a wife, right? That's a major life event. And so as you're seeking the Lord first, you can't lose bottom line and you will, um, you will be able to find a wife in God's timing. Okay. Here we go. We're going to read some more and then I'll answer some more questions. I like the pace of this Bible study right now. Appreciate you guys being in here. And I can't wait. I, I said this before, but if you're just joining, I can't wait for my new webcam. That'll be much higher quality. I have a DSLR camera. So I have my Sony camera behind the laptop here set up when I was doing my video. But it seemed kind of confusing to set that up for live stream. And then also I read about issues with lag. So I just bought the nicest. Uh, it's actually the first 4K webcam. They just came out with it a year ago. And I'll use that because that'll definitely be good enough. Because this channel, as you guys know, I honestly don't live stream that much. I did make a secret channel called Hang On. Comment if you guys have saw it. But I made a secret channel called Hang On. My vision for that channel, you guys are getting an inside scoop here because I'm sure sometimes it confuses you. Also, really quick funny story. My first video was titled Eagles on that channel. And a lot of you guys, or maybe not you guys, but a lot of people commented, oh, Turk's going to the Eagles yet. Let my SBS Manobi know. I just, I titled it Eagles because I was quoting Isaiah. And this is so cool. I'm reading Isaiah 40 right now. I didn't even realize that. But I was thinking of the video of uh, the verse Isaiah 40, 31, which talks about all uh, eagle. It mentions the, the name Eagles or the verse or the word Eagles. Sorry, I'm rambling. And I wanted to make a just random video talking about something and then say a Bible verse. That was kind of the vision for that channel. And maybe that'll be a podcast channel one day. But then anyway, a lot of people thought I was talking about the team Eagles and I was like, oh boy. But why am I talking about all this again? Let's keep going. Hey, Jeff Martinez, $50 donation. Thanks, Jeff. Love you, bro. I appreciate that. Let's go. All right. I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> Verse 18. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness compare with him? An idol, a crafts. I'm gonna verse. I'm gonna read verse 19 now, and and keep going. An idol, a craftsman cra uh, casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts for it silver chains. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skillful craftsman to set up an idol that will move, that will not move. So right there, Isaiah is saying. Basically, and that's what I was saying earlier in this live stream, that there's only one true God. When people worship other quote unquote gods, they're not real. And, and it's an idol. And then people actually did this. They would, you know, literally build little statues, whether it's made out of gold or wood, and pretend like that's a God. How they did that, I don't know how you can rationally do that or even think that that's in, in any way rational. But the reason that they did it, which people still do today, by the way, but the reason people do it is because it allows them to make themselves God and make their own rules and really caters to their pride and allows them to continue to sin. Because the one true God calls us to repent of our sin and not put our trust in ourselves, but our, put our trust fully in him. And also today, I will say there's a lot of people who don't physically make a statue. You know, so there's a lot of people who don't physically make a statue, but they create an idol in their mind of who they think God is. And it's a false God. Uh, an easy example would be like the prosperity gospel that's commonly preached in America from mega churches. Um, God's only here like a genie to give you, give, give. 
And that's an idol that the people create in their mind. There's also other idols that people create in their mind. Uh, but that's just the easy one that came to mind, the prosperity gospel. And that's very prevalent. You know, Joel Steen, T.D. Jakes, um, Benny Hinn, yada, yada. It's, you know, if you read the scriptures, you know that that's not the character of the one true God. But that's what Isaiah is talking about here is we don't want to worship and serve idols. We want to worship and serve the one true God. Okay, let's keep going. I love this part. Check this out. Verse 21. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. So right here, we're talking about the power of God again. Uh, verse 22. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in? Who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness? Um, right now, he's he's asking these rhetorical questions, Isaiah is, to set up what he's about to say at the end of this chapter. So hang in here with me. Right here, we're still talking about the power of God. Verse 24. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither. And the temptest carries them like off like stubble. Verse 25. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name. By the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. So now the Lord is directly speaking himself here. And, and he's asking these rhetorical questions. Who created these? Looking up at the star, who who created at the star? Who created the stars? Um, again, trying to help us understand the magnitude of God's power and the magnitude of His power compared to us. We're like grasshoppers. I like that. It's like look look down at the grasshopper, and it's even smaller in scale, and obviously, but it's just it's just to help you understand, and it's to help humans relate how insignificant and how powerless we are compared to God. Now, the full counsel of God's will in the scripture, we know that we are significant though. We are made in his image and he wants to have a relationship with us. But this, this first understanding the gravity, the gravitas of God, of Yahweh, the one true God compared to us, should humble us and should also give us much comfort. Because in the, the Christian message, the gospel you are reconciled back to this God. And that's why Romans 8, you know, Paul's going on and on. He says, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, difficulty, death, demons, angels? No, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. And the good thing is too, he's in control of everything. So the one with the ultimate power is the one who loves you and is guiding your life. Right. But you, you have to understand this because there's some people that uh, don't understand just how all powerful God is. Right. Sorry, I keep I keep touching this mic, man, and keep adjusting it. I'm, I guess I'm not used to it yet. I'm looking like I'm about to get it. I don't get it. All right. Let's take some questions and then I'll read the rest of this chapter. Where's Grace? Grace? Grace is actually, her and the softball team uh, had one last hurrah to celebrate their national championship, and they got to, uh, go to go to D.C., so she'll be coming home soon, Lord willing, tomorrow. Um, Alex said, hey, Turk, do you think God created more beings in the universe? Is there anywhere in the Bible that may give an answer? No, I don't think God created more um, living things in the universe simply because the scripture doesn't say that. And so any, any thought of that would just be um, your own guess. But it wouldn't make sense, in my opinion, because we are the apple of God's eye. Um, and, and the redemption story is about redeeming humans. Um, so, yeah. I, I also feel like there's just not any, uh, there's no value to even ponder that question. Because, again, it's not... 
relevant to anything that the scripture says or talks about. However, I will say, Alex, I don't know if you heard me say earlier, um, the universe being so large, right? We can't even wrap our mind around how large the universe is. I think for some people that's a stumbling block for some reason, but if anything, it should humble you even more and confirm even more that there, not only is there a God, but that he's all powerful beyond measure. And that should, you know, God did that on purpose. Psalm 19, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God or Romans one, we see his, his, uh, his nature and his power through creation. Anyway, let me answer another question. Um, Uh, Jose said, Hey Turk, any advice on what to do when family members make fun of me? Always bringing up my faith and say God isn't real, etc. Just many hurtful things. Thank you. Great question. Uh, I love how the disciples worded it. Um, let me look up where they said it. They said, Rejoiced to be counted worthy to suffer shame. Oh, uh, Acts 5.41. Uh, so in the book of Acts, it's short for the Acts, uh, the Acts of the Apostles. When they are very, when they are being persecuted, it says in verse uh, 41 of chapter 5, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing that they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Uh, in other words, they, they rejoiced to be counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And so I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, so Jose, I hope this helps you or anyone watching. Whenever you suffer making people making fun of you or any, any, any level of persecution for being a Christian, it's actually a reason to rejoice because you're, you're, you're being counted worthy to suffer shame for his name in the sense of Jesus is no longer here on earth. And when he was here, he was killed. He was crucified to the point of death. So now that hatred that the world has still for Jesus is being poured out on Christians um, because they have the Holy Spirit in them and they're the aroma of or the aroma of Christ. And so um, I understand what you're saying because as humans, we naturally want to fit in. We naturally want acceptance. But for me, understanding that it's a reason to rejoice, change my mindset, my mindset on that whenever I face people making fun of me or whatever it might be. And also just honestly thinking about my sin in my past life, what God saved me from all the miraculous things he's done in my life. I'm like, dude, I, uh, I'm so thankful that God saved me. You think you making fun of me, like, it, you know, brings me suffering. It literally makes me joyful to know that you think you like, that I'm being considered worthy to suffer shame for his name and that Jesus, you know, cause God sees everything. And that's why Jesus says, if we're ashamed to, you know, if we're ashamed to confess his name here, he'll be ashamed to confess us before the father. And so it's kind of just a change in mindset. And, uh, you know, now I never experienced real physical persecution, obviously. And so I, I want to tread lightly here because I don't want to say that I'd be, perfect in that scenario and just you know handle persecution like that perfectly but i would hope and pray too even if it's to the point of really bad physical persecution even to the point of death like some of our brothers and or sisters in christ are experiencing all over the world that in that moment too you know the holy spirit he lives in you and gives you the strength to endure and that's why i love second corinthians 12 one of my favorite passages in the bible the Apostle Paul says in verse nine, he, you know, Jesus responds to him when Paul is complaining about his weakness and this thorn in the flesh. Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. And so after that, Paul concludes, oh, therefore, I'm going to boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses that, that the power of Christ merits upon me. Um, he delights in weaknesses, insults, persecutions, difficulty. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So Jose or whoever's watching this, if you feel like people are making fun of you, you're getting persecuted, ask God for his grace and understand that in your weakness is when his power is actually perfected and you're going to be made strong.
And there's more I can say, but I think that's a good way to cap off that question. Let me take another question and then finish off these verses. And the last part, of, for those of you who've been here for the beginning of me reading this chapter, I love the ending here. These last four verses, or last five verses rather, are so good and, and, and uh, helpful and potent. Here we go. And thank you for all of the kind comments, guys. I can't read them all out loud, but I do read them. Um, let's see. There's another question. Okay, I don't see many questions. So, oh, Corey said, Hey, Turk, how does God give you the words to say when talking about the Lord? I just can't seem to put into words the information of Jesus and the importance of him. Corey, that's a fantastic question. For all of you listening, I'm sure this is a very helpful question um, and an honest one, Corey. So thank you for asking that. And to encourage you, um, you know, fun story. When I was at Lafayette College, so if you didn't know, my first year of playing college football was at a Division One AA school because I... In high school, I didn't punt. I had three ACL surgeries, and I received a scholarship offer just based off of, ironically, YouTube film alone. This is before I had a YouTube channel. But I sent out YouTube film of me punting, and a small school called Lafayette College offered me a scholarship to come play for them. Um, so thank God for that. But I say that to say, not a lot of people know this either, but at Lafayette, I, and I kind of forgot, <laughs> actually, now that I'm talking about it out loud, I made a YouTube channel. Uh, just Michael Turk, and it was to upload gospel encounter type videos like Ray Comfort. So I, I guess like uh, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber, apparently. But anyway, I say that to say one of my first videos I was I had a GoPro because I've always uh, since the Lord saved me I've been uh, I, have, I have the gift of evangelism. I'm an evangelist. I would say I'm a wretched worm. Let's get it right. But I'm redeemed. I have the Holy Spirit. But I am an evangelist. And so during my gap year, I would share the gospel to people to people on Uber rides, um, wherever, uh, at the park. I would just ask people, hey, can I talk to you for a moment? Um, I'm, I'm going around asking people, do you know for sure if you're going to go to heaven after you die? Stuff like that. And so I don't want to get too sidetracked here. But during my gap year, that also the Uber rides were really helpful for me because they were already stuck with me in the car. So... I was in the back seat too, kind of just, it was kind of a good dynamic to talk. It was a very natural setting. But I mentioned Lafayette because I'll never forget, I was going around talking to people. I was feeling confident in sharing the gospel, still nervous. But then I, I took my GoPro out with me to make my first video on my channel called Michael Turk. And I, I asked this guy to talk to him. I was holding my GoPro, but I was like shaking. I was holding my GoPro. All of a sudden, I got pretty anxious and nervous and it was, it was still a good conversation. But after that, I was kind of discouraged. But then I realized, wait a second. I know I have this gift, but I need to grow in sanctification. I need to grow in my ability to speak to people. I need to grow in my knowledge of the scripture. I need to grow in my maturity in relationship with the Lord. And I, God just, you know, he encouraged me along the way to keep going and keep talking to people. So Corey, right now, if you feel like you don't have the words to, to perfectly, you know, can't, can't seem to put into words the information of Jesus and the importance of him, I want to encourage you to keep trying because the Lord doesn't need a perfect vessel to complete his will. The Lord needs a willing vessel. And so or he doesn't need anything, but you get the point I'm trying to make. The Lord uses a willing vessel, rather. Um, and actually, the fact that you know that you are incompetent in and, of, in and of yourself makes you a good vessel for him to use because God is seeking those who are humble and and you know delight in, in his power, not their own. In my own strength, I'm actually very weak. I'm very not outgoing. Uh unable to articulate well, but when I do humble myself and rely upon the power of the Holy Spirit, I feel like that's a gift that God has given me to evangelize and to talk to people. So long story, not to ramble, 
but I hope that encourages you to, if God has, if God's putting that desire on your heart to go speak to people and share the gospel and be the aroma of Christ, wherever you go, understand that you're going to get better at doing that over time. And, um, that's for some people that seems like not very spiritual, right? Cause it's like, well, if it's by the power of the Holy spirit, why doesn't it just happen then? Um, but God, you know, works through means and he designed it that way for his, uh, servants to get more skilled in their ability to do that. And also be encouraged that, like I said before, it doesn't have to be a perfect presentation in the sense of only the Holy Spirit can truly save somebody, right? So if you are planting the seed of the gospel, if you can memorize John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, hypothetically, like even if you just said that alone, Corey, you can walk away from that conversation encouraged that they heard the gospel and the Holy Spirit, he's the one who who, who will ultimately save them if it's that person's will to be saved. Um, but I get what you're saying because like there are, I could think back to when I was younger, there were certain conversations where I just left like, oh man, I, why couldn't I answer back to what they were saying? But thankfully, and I still have a lot of room to grow obviously, but thankfully through just talking to so many people, I've grown in that aspect of like, okay, this person's clearly just trying to go down rabbit holes. I'm going to, I'm going to revert it back to the gospel or, oh, they got a, they got a question about how come the, how's the Bible reliable? Well, let me tell you, Isaiah 53, it's a prophetic utterance perfectly of the, the crucifixion before um, Christ came, right? Um, from Genesis to Revelation, it tells, the scripture tells you everything about the condition of man and God's full story. There's no way that a human can make this up. From Genesis, to, from Genesis to Revelation, you see the silver lining of the Holy Spirit, all the prophecies that are fulfilled. There's no contradiction. It has to be God's word. Um, there's a foreshadowing of Abraham offering his son Isaac, right? We see that that was a foreshadowing of the father offering his son Jesus. And this, this helps uh, give us more... Um, trust in the scripture and, and the veracity of scripture speaks for itself. So I don't mean to ramble here and I, I know I'm rambling a lot. So we're gonna get to the next question, but I just hope that you uh, understood or got something out of that or some of you guys did. Um, George, I, I just scrolled down and I, and I appreciate you commenting a lot, but guys, please not try, try not to spam the comment like that, but share your most inspirational statement, please read the Bible. Thank you, George. Hey, love you too, Mizan. Okay, guys, dun, 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 we're on the finale here. Verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Verse 30. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall not walk and not be faint and not faint amen and hallelujah guys we just read all about god's power i've been speaking upon you know, i've been speaking to the reality of how powerful god is it just said before the nations are like a drop in the bucket so you might have been thinking oh man god is so powerful but we're just like grasshoppers the nations are like a drop in the bucket i feel lonely does it really care about me i feel weak i feel anxious yada yada well guess what how about some encouragement and, and, that, and that's why in verse 27, he's asking the rhetorical question, why do you say, O Jacob, why do you speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? In other words, that's like some of us saying, ah, oh, God doesn't see what's going on. God doesn't know. Just, man, my life, there's certain things that, you know, I just feel alone. God doesn't understand. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's a lie from Satan. Um. 
He says in verse 28, have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. The full extent of God's understanding is unsearchable. And the, 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 the fact of the matter is, since his power doesn't faint or grow weary, he's able to give you that power. And I love how he says in verse 29, he gives power to the faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. So tonight, if you're watching this on live or if you're watching this on replay, if you are lacking strength, cry out to the God of all strength and power. Our God is a God of power. And it says here, he will give it to you. He will renew your strength. If you look to the Lord, he will renew your strength. And I love how verse 30, Isaiah says, listen, listen, you might think, you know, you might think that only the elderly grow faint or weary only, you know, Hey, you're a young man. You should be strong and healthy. No, he says, even youths shall faint and be weary and young men, right? The, so the, the strongest human demographic that there is physically a young man, that's the strongest human demographic, but even a young man shall fall exhausted. And I, and this is, you know, I, I believe this is a combination of physical exhaustion. Yes. But even more so mental and physical our uh, mental and spiritual exhaustion, right? So all three mental, spiritual, and physical, if you feel exhausted tonight, this verse is for you. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen and hallelujah. So I hope that encourages you guys. Um, I know it encourages me. This world is a, you know, an evil place. Even as we, as we have someone trying to make a joke after reading such uh not owen i just i just blocked you and you should fear the lord and actually fear right now that he doesn't um punish you but you know just like that the world is 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 the world hates god and newsflash if you're a christian the world hates you so you might get exhausted at times you might get exhausted from external factors and internal but the good news is god loves you he gives strength to the weary and as you lean upon him and trust him You'll fly on wings like eagles. All right, let's answer a couple more questions and then I'm going to head off. <sighs> News on YouTube. Let's go. Thank you for the $5 donation. Your first super on a live stream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for the good comments. Uh, Nathan, no, I don't use KJV. I use a, uh, I, I read a lot out of the English Standard Version. Um, yeah. Uh, J7KH said, how do I deal with guilt from the past? That's a great question. Um, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. I can relate to that earlier on in my walk. That was something that I really had to wrestle with, honestly. Um, but first John one nine. So uh, this is a good one for you to write down or memorize J seven K H. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Hmm. That's a that's the truth, bro. That's the truth. And then also I want to share with you, read Psalm 51. Okay. Psalm 51, King David, guys, you all know the story of David and Goliath, one of the most um important characters of the scriptures. If you could say the word important, you know what I mean? Uh, relevant. He committed murder and adultery after being saved, right? This guy, he was saved. He was a believer and he still did this. And and the the uh the guilt that he felt was so tremendous, so tremendous, but he wrote Psalm 51 after that. And so I'd encourage you to read that. Anyone who's struggling with guilt, read Psalm 51 and cry out to God. He gives grace. The truth is, it's a proverb, God gives grace to the humble, but opposes the proud. Right. 
Um, but I, I just wanted to read one verse from Psalm 51. Um, where is it? Oh, verse four. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. That verse helped me because um, even if your sin or guilt is against other people or whatever it might be, understand that ultimately you've sinned against God. And that's why if God forgives you, like Paul says in Romans 8, who is he who condemns? It is God who justifies. There is no one who can bring a, a condemning verdict against you. Romans 8, 1, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, not even yourself, not even your own thoughts. You, Even if you're experiencing that feeling of guilt, the reality is your sins have been paid for. Jesus suffered on that cross. And so I want to encourage you, rather than um, wallowing in that guilt, turn it into joy. That's why the psalmist says in Psalm 30, uh, uh, there is joy in the morning. And I, I forget how he words it, but he says how uh, his morning turned into joy. Once you understand the good news that Jesus' death and suffering on the cross paid for your sin, that guilt will turn from guilt to praise and to love. Because, th listen, we all deserve to feel guilty. We've all messed up. right? We've all sinned. So, and it's all types of sin, right? Against other people, against whatever. But ultimately, it's against God. And that's why who the sun sets free is free indeed. And you need to rejoice in that reality and now go live a life for God, right? Uh, not to earn your way, not to pay for your mistakes, not to make up for it, but to live a joyful, purposeful, grateful life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? God will even use, the amazing thing is, God will even use your past experiences for your good and for his glory. Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. So press into that and 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 really take comfort in that. So, okay, guys, I think I'm going to end it here. Um, it is, we've been doing this live stream for an hour and seven minutes. So I appreciate all of you guys joining. Uh, just let you, and I really do, you know, I do see all the questions. I'm sorry I can't answer all of them. Um, but thank you so much for asking them and for commenting. And if you're watching on replay, uh, thank you very thank you very much. Next time I do a live stream, hopefully you guys will see. I ordered a, a nice uh, face cam that is 4K. And I see, you know, I get this question a lot. When do I do live streams? Honestly, maybe I should be more scheduled with these, but they're kind of just whenever I sporadic. So um a good way to make sure you see them right now, please, if you're watching this, hit the notification bell and turn on all notifications. That way, whenever I post a video or when I go live, you'll get a notification and you could hopefully watch it live. And of course, I hope you still watch and replay if you didn't catch it, but that's a really good way because right now I'm not scheduled with my live streams. Perhaps in the future, I will be more scheduled with them. Uh, go subscribe to my other channel, Hang On but you got to keep it a secret. Shh, shh, shh. Keep it on the down low. Uh, I'm eventually trying to grow that to be a specifically Christian based channel or just random thoughts and maybe more podcast style. But the main channel hang time, I love to do the vlogs. Um, the more I'm trying to do more experiential type videos, um, not just sports. And really I haven't been just sports. I've always tried to implement my life, obviously. And of course the gospel, I will do that to the day I die. I don't care if that causes me you know, some people not to like it. I have to always sprinkle in verses and be myself and be truly who, you know, God has saved me and I, I have to use this platform for him. So I, I will always do that. But what I mean is like the main channel, I'm not going to do podcasts on there <clears throat> or do like a commentary. Like for example, and I know I'm going longer now, but <clears throat> so on this channel, hang time, I'm not going to do like okay, there's a new Christian movie out. I want to comment on it and like talk about my review of it or whatever. I'm not going to make a video on here about that because it just, it'd be too cluttered. It wouldn't be, um, you know, professional enough in the sense of like, this is, this channel is like vlogs and doing stuff like that. So a good, a good solution would be to do those types of videos on the hang on YouTube channel. And who knows if God, if God wants, he can grow that channel a lot, but 
it's hard. It's it's hard right now. I'm a one man show. I don't have an accountant. I don't have someone who edits my videos. I don't have someone who helps me with ideas. I don't have someone who films for me. Like, you know, Gracie, my wife helps me out, but I got to come up with, I got to do it all myself. And I don't say that for pity. I say that to say, um, it's hard to grow that channel too right now. Cause I'm trying to do both. So, but anyway, no mean to ramble just since you're on this live stream or watching, these are some of my inside thoughts that I usually don't get to say on, a, on other videos. So you guys got the exclusive insight. Anyway, love you guys. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. Please like it. It'll help it reach more people in the algorithm. Obviously subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't, check out my most recent videos before bed. Who knows? Maybe you'll like them. I hope you do. Love you guys. Thank you, Hang Gang. Praying for you. Keep fighting the good fight. Do the Lord's will. And trust him. He gives you the power even when you're weak. All glory goes to God. Grace, love, peace, and mercy. Grace does not like when I do that. Love you.